So for more, we now welcome to studio activist Manny Wax, the CEO of the organization Voice Against Child Sexual Abuse. Manny, thank you so much for being here in thank studio. You. Goosebumps listening to these courageous women. It is staggering to think that it took 15 years to get this guilty verdict. You were intimately involved in this case. Your reaction? I mean, firstly, it's an incredible day for justice. Uh, most people uh, were sceptical or worse. No, many people didn't think this day would actually arrive and here we are sitting about discussing a guilty uh, verdict uh, or verdict. So I'm absolutely elated for these three courageous survivors who went through an arduous process over so many years, fought with such perseverance and dignity, and ultimately they succeeded. They are proof uh, and encouragement for survivors, anyone who was abused, to try to pursue justice because ultimately we will get even some semblance of justice in the case. According to reports, this 56-year-old school principal sat motionless in court when the verdict was read out. What has the reaction been like in Australia to what unfolded? I mean, I, I, as someone who attended um, the hearings, firstly here in Israel, the 75 court hearings just for the extradition to get to Australia, but then also I just returned from Australia last week after sitting inside the courtroom for almost six weeks, uh, just so difficult listening to what these courageous sisters endured. Um, the, the, the response has been overwhelming um, from the Australian Jewish community, but also uh, beyond that. And uh, people are just really happy to see that uh, in these difficult times there is some happy news, positive news in that justice is seen to be served and that's critical. At the same time I think it's important also to remember that one of the three uh, complainants, um, Nicole, the older sister, all the charges in her case unfortunately were not guilty so my heart really does uh, go out to Nicole and she's in my thoughts and uh, really hope that uh, she'll be able to um, move on uh, in, in a positive and constructive and healing kind of way. Also incredible that the three sisters were content to have their names made public. That is often not the case in situations like this, but it helped their campaign over all these years. Certainly, as you say, incredibly courageous to have to go through the ordeal again in court and relive their ordeal. Incredibly brave. Talk to us about the reaction, though, and the criticism in some circles about what happened in Israel, how Malka Leifer managed to flee to Israel and was protected by certain communities. How is that being received right now as this verdict unfolds? Uh, firstly, the fact that um, Malka Leifer was uh, helped to evade justice by the Adas Israel school leadership back in 2008 is a first uh, point that needs to also be examined. And I know there is a great deal of discussion around that now and myself and others are hopeful that Victoria Police will open this investigation and hopefully hold those to account because we need deterrence, we need justice, we need accountability. And in terms of what transpired here in Israel, it is absolutely shocking what happened. These brave girls were up against it, not only against the system, but also those in leadership positions who were up uh, supporting Malka Life and doing whatever they can, whether it was former Health Minister Yaakov Litzman, who ended up having to be uh, to, to resign from the Knesset, which is um, seemingly a, a paltry um, a, a payment for something of, of such magnitude to try to uh, stop Michael Leifer from being extradited to Australia. Um, but then there were others as well, Rabbi Grossman, a senior rabbi who offered to assist uh, Leifer as well. So really the, the, the girls were up against it, but in spite of all of this, they succeeded, they got Mark Khalifa to Australia, she faced justice and was found guilty. But hopefully this will be a learning curve for many people, for countries, for Israel, the way it deals with these types of issues, for Australia in terms of ensuring that people can't evade justice in this kind of way. So there are a lot of lessons learned, but thankfully we are where we are today and it's an incredible day. Very briefly, how many years is Malka Leifer likely to get when she is eventually sentenced? Look, the, there's going to be the sentencing hearings are going to start at the end of this month. Um, let's not forget she has been sitting in jail since February 2018 um, and that came up today in terms of the defence trying to use that, um, that she has already sat quite a few years. So I'm sure that will all be taken into consideration. 
I, I would be cautious uh, in having too many expectations for much longer than five years. She's already served a great deal in these types of cases. Many of us believe that that's nowhere near enough, of course, for count, uh, many counts of rape and sexual assault, but hopefully um, we'll see justice uh, till the end. Manny Wax, the CEO of the organisation Voice Against Child Sexual Abuse, thank you so much for being here thank you, as we continue to put a spotlight on the fight for justice.